Okay, so here's a, another video, just something I picked up off uh, off of AP. And when I saw this, I realized that that this question just keeps coming up. It seems like it's been on the exam year after year after year. So I thought I'd go over it quick uh, and that we could just look at it. So here's what it looks like. This is solving a particle motion problem numerically. And it says, this is a table. So if you can just imagine this is more of a table than it looks like. So here's my little table. And the table looks like this. And here we have time, t, in minutes, and we have velocity, v of t, in meters per second, and it looks like this. And so that's all they give us. They don't give us an equation. They just ask us to look at this numerically and, and draw some conclusion. It says, so the first part of the problem says, at t equals zero, is the particle moving to the right or to the left? Explain. Well, it says right here that at time equals zero, the velocity is negative three. Remember that we have a particle that's moving along the x-axis, so it's moving. So, so the particle moves along the x-axis, so it's horizontal movement here. So the answer is, is the particle moving left or right? It's moving left. Left. And then, of course, we have to explain our answer. And our answer is that it's moving left because the velocity is negative. So left, we have to explain because, whoops, that's not a very good book sign, but because the velocity is negative. And specifically, it's negative 3, isn't it? So, okay. Then the second question is, is there a time during the interval 0 to 12? Well, this should be second, shouldn't it? So 0 to 12 seconds when the particle is at rest. Well, look, we know that this function is uh, continuous and, and differentiable, and it goes from negative 3 to a positive number. It doesn't matter what positive number it goes to. It goes from negative 3 to 5. Well, to go from negative 3 to 5, it would have had to have, cro had, had to have crossed a velocity of 0. So the answer is yes. So we can cite the intermediate, intermediate value theorem. guarantees us that if this function is differentiable and continuous, and it is, uh, that we'll have all values between negative 3, right? The intermediate value theorem guarantees that we will have all values Between negative three and seven, and seven, and of course, at case of t equals zero, we have a speed of zero, and that's in negative, right? So, so negative three to seven. And, of course, we have zero right in there. So, yeah, we're going to get that value, aren't we? Uh, the next part of the question says, let a, of, let a of t denote the acceleration of the particle at time t. Is there a guarantee to be a time t equals c in the interval 0, I'm sorry, t is greater than 0, less than 12, such that a of c is equal to 0, and then ask us to justify our answer? And the answer here is yes, isn't it? The answer here is yes. The answer here is yes. Yes. The value is guaranteed by... Which one do you want to use? You want to use mean value theorem by mean, you should write this out if this was the exam, mean value theorem or Rolle's theorem. 
And again, I would definitely have written out mean value theorem, but I wouldn't do this. Um, and it's actually over there. So we're going to have v of 12 minus v of 6, isn't it? Over 12 minus 6 is equal to 0, right? Because look at v of 12, right? V of 12 is 5, so this is what I'm looking at here. I'm looking at V of 5 here. Whoops, I didn't mean to do it that way. I meant to use this. V of 5 is 12, but right, V of 6, uh, yeah, V of 6 is also 12. So we get, right, 5 minus 5 over 6 is equal to 0, so check mark. We would definitely get that value. Okay, hope this is helpful. Um, these types of problems show up prolifically on the AP exam. So these are the types of problems that you should be practicing. Okay, I'm going to try to post as many more as I can over the weekend. So um, keep working.